All right, welcome back. I would say that uh, this video is going to be short, but I want to make sure I go through it slowly and cover everything. And we'll start out with, or I'll start out with first saying, there's a new Dragon OS Pi 64 build. Um, I would I would suggest running it on a Pi 4. It, it can run on a Pi 3, but in this case, I am looking at the desktop of a newly flashed. SD card in a Pi 4 with this Beta 31 and you can see the upgrades all the way up to the SDR for Space Scripts with a new SDR VM, uh, all the latest builds of Sig Digger Sat Dump, SDR Angel, SDR Trunk, and then I've added Caribou Light, uh, the Mirage, and if you happen to have like I do sitting here a Sim 7600 cellular hat. Uh, which I'll probably cover in a later video. I've put some scripts in there for that. But the Caribou Light um, has been uh, talked about for a while, and I've been asked about including support. So I've got it in there, but there's going to be a couple things that you're going to have to do because not everyone has a Caribou Light, and I didn't want it all enabled um, for those that basically don't have it. So how do we get this going? Uh, there's a getting started guide on the desktop of Dragon OS, and I'm up to about like 18 things here that uh, I, I try to make it like a pretty helpful guide. Now I've already taken care of this part that I will go over just to make sure that I am covering it and I should point out while I'm pulling it up here boot firmware config.txt in a normal PyOS build or PyOS based on like Debian or Raspbian or Debian um, it's in boot uh, forward slash config.txt but DragonOS Pi 64 is based on 22.04 Ubuntu Arch 64, and it's a slightly different area um, that this config.txt is in. Now I've just catted it out here so we can see the change that I have made, which is this area here, just like it talks about in the guide. I've got the I2C ARM SPI off, and I've added a new line, I2C underscore VC on. I've already done that and then I've rebooted the Pi. Now that makes that uh, SPI or that uh, Caribou light accessible here. So you got to do that. That's one thing you got to do. The other thing is, and you can just copy and paste it right here because I didn't want a lot of extra output in SOAPY uh, when you're running the utility. Um, so I took out the compiled SOAPY Caribou Light.so file, and I put it in a backup folder in Dragon OS on the actual SD or on the actual image in user source, the yeah, user source firmware Caribou Light. And what does that mean? It just essentially means I'm going to copy the uh, .so file back to where it should be in the operating system, so that when you run and you need to run, that's the other catch. Right now code as is for the caribou light you need to pretty much run like sudo in front of everything to use it and I know the developer has been a lot of changes here recently um, I have a particular build in this current image at the time of this recording that worked for uh, several different applications that I tried there's newer code but I I found there to be issues so I'm gonna wait uh, but hopefully here in the sh in, in the near future you won't have to use uh, the sudo uh, with essentially everything that you're trying to do with the caribou light. So I should be able to run and find the caribou light interface, which you saw really quick. The firmware was loaded. There's going to be a lot of output on the screen. Don't really worry about the SDR play. Um, that mention of that there, that's kind of a situation where I have the uh, soapy SDR play actually in place, but I have the API optionally installed by the user so until you install the SDR play API you will get that but that's it's not really hurting anything anyways back to the caribou light we can see we have two the S1G and the HIF the top one here um, has chunks of the spectrum that it covers like I think it's below one gigahertz and you can read up on that and then the second interface which I'm going to more so focus on is a, a much wider all the way up to six gigahertz and so we'll We'll try that here. And what do I mean by try that? Okay, so uh, let me think. I think one of the 
I won't say it's like super easy because we have to do the sudo, but a little work around here. If we want to run everything on the Pi itself and be able to hear, hear audio and demodulate and all that stuff, let's, uh, we'll do, I've talked about this in the past. This is a, a SIG digger tool, the SU CLI. And what I'm going to do is use sudo to make a profile for a for the sig digger server normally you wouldn't run sig digger like this but in this case this is a workaround that uh, seems to work for the caribou light so i'm going to add um, profiles here you can see and i'll explain what that means here in a second so if we do sudo csli and we want to run the device server which think of it like uh, Soapy, soapy remote or uh, RTL, uh, TCP, think of it something like that. But in this case, this server for SigDigger is going to run and it's going to do all the D DSP and all that stuff behind the scenes. And you'll see when you try to run it uh, for the first time, scroll up, that we need a users.yaml file. And because I'm just going to make this easy so I don't mess this up, I'm going to change the root only because of this circumstance with the caribou light and sudo and I'm going to well we don't need that I'm gonna nano I'm gonna put this to make sure that I'm going to the root folder I mean I could just as easily go to root root dot forward slash uh, suscan which is like a hidden folder there uh, config and we're gonna do users dot yaml and I'll paste everything you see here essentially what it said in the output from a second ago and I'm gonna make the password something easy of course password and let's oop, hit escape uh, oh I'm, I'm thinking I'm in uh, Vim or something here so control O X or control O and then X to exit now we should be able, I'll just stay as root. We should eh, we should be able to run our dev serve if, and I'll just run it on all, all interfaces. Okay, now that um, Caribou Light profile, um, if you go in the same directory where I made the users files there is the sources file and you can see it, it sets a certain center frequency certain bandwidth all that that's all adjustable and I would recommend changing it otherwise when you start and stop a uh, sig digger like I'm going to show you here in a second it will revert back uh, to the center frequency that's in the profile so we should be serving two profiles and you can go under uh, ham radio and find a shortcut to sig digger but I just want to observe uh, and I'm not going to start this side with sudo okay so I just want to point that out although it is going to look for uh, the caribou light stuff there but what I want to do is change this it'll be on local but I want to change it to remote We'll do localhost 28003, we'll do root, and we'll do password. I'm not really so much concerned about the settings up here because that's going to be set in the profile. And let's see, let's go ahead. We'll see, we should see a connection. Let me minimize this. We should see a connection here when we start this up in a second. or make this a little bit smaller and so we see that we have a connection and let me turn the baseband audio preview preview off this normally would have been on uh, AM I've already I've already had changed it to FM and the other thing you may have to do in the Pi under audio input it may be on this playback recording through the pulse audio server was what it was like defaulted on and I'll check it again 
Oh, okay, so the audio in that case uh, does work there, but just know you might have to adjust that. Also, too, with depending on how many things you got going on on the Pi, um, you know, it uses, you know, there's some processing going on here, and so you might want to um, change the frame per second here. Let me see. Let me turn this off a second. And if I come down, we can let's take this down to 10 FPS, and we'll come back up. Turn this on. Let's come down here, and we'll mess with the gain a little bit. Okay. Okay, so you can probably hear that audio in the background. The clipping, uh, something with the uh, the hat, but we are demodulating. I guess I could, I guess I could turn it down a little bit. So you can you can hear you know there's some good audio there, um, but that is coming through the Caribou light on the Pi all on one thing here. Now you could just as easily run on the Pi and then uh, access access it over the network with SigDigger on something else on your home network there or even through the internet. So you can see the antenna, the bandwidth, processing rate's pretty good. Um, the demodulators on FM and so now you can use SigDigger pretty well. Uh, you might find that getting into channel inspection and open up inspectors might be a little strain. Um, actually, I'm kind of curious, but um, because what's going to happen is, is that inspector is going to open up uh, yet another window and and um, might just be a, a little much. But uh, I'm, I'm assuming if I give it a second here, you can see it's opening the PSK inspector uh, that it will probably come up here uh, either that or it's going to have uh, a little bit of a slowdown here I'll give it I'll give it a second here so while we're doing that uh, I think I want to jump over and we can take a look at maybe open webrx which is in Dragon OS. I haven't really like talked about it much. It's the newer um, version that you can actually edit through the web page itself. It's not the uh, actually I think it is like the latest release of OpenWebRx and LK and there's that that PSK inspector that uh, finally opened and you can see that you can use that and dig a little more but again it might be a little much uh, on, on just the Pi to do all this. So important thing is the uh, caribou light is working the audio is pretty good and that's all out of the box so I'm gonna shut that off I think I covered everything I wanted to, wanted to there